Hi, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here already, I'm Lou. I am a 20 year old trying to find beauty and balance in the everyday. So if you like books, beauty, and more, just keep on watching. Today is a beautiful day. It's cold, it's fall, but the leaves are changing and I just thought we'd have a cozy conversation about some books today while I put on my makeup. So if you want, grab a little mug, grab a snack, and let's just be cozy. So it's fall here. One of my favorite genres to read in fall and even winter are some kind of spooky reads. I like to read a lot of gothic tales, things with darker or even existential themes. This is one of my favorite books. This might be my favorite book of all time, but I kind of have like a three-way tie going on right now. So the first book I'm going to recommend is The Picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> this is such a great gothic tale about beauty and morality, and I, I have a lot of fingerprints on this. This has so much to do with how we see ourselves, how others see us, and if you don't know the ending... You have to give it a read. I so my next recommendation is going to be The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is kind of on the same level as the picture of Dorian Gray for me. I love this tale. It is so dark and creepy and twisty. And it's very much like <laughs> my other favorite. Frankenstein. The reason that I really love those three is they have very gothic themes that really just immerse you in this creepy tale from the beginning. Um, all three of those really talk about beauty, morality. Um, Frankenstein is really just a tale about loneliness but I think the best part for me is it's just very immersive spooky and even existential and that is really what I love about those books so the next recommendation I'm going to make is Carmilla this is really a predecessor of Dracula and I haven't read Dracula yet so if you are a lazy girl a busy pal, read this. This is much shorter than Dracula. If you do what I did and listen to very atmospheric classical music at the same time you read this, this is just going to immerse you further in the setting of this book and really leave that spooky, creepy feeling in your bones. So love Carmilla. <laughs> The next book I'm going to recommend is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I just loved how atmospheric this was. I love a creepy old mansion. I love the creepy housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers, who haunts my waking hours as well as my nightmares. Um, I just love this book. It feels like you are the narrator. It feels like you are walking these long corridors and just with this cold breeze coming through. Um, it is very mysterious. Her new husband seems to have some secrets. There's also a very palpable, strange vibe in this house. Rebecca is a great read just to curl up on the couch and get all of those spooky mansion vibes. So the next book I'm going to recommend is Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. I think the best thing about this story for me is how it sticks with you after you've read it. I actually didn't love this book on first read. I didn't fall in love with it until after it had stayed with me for a few days and even few weeks. And I still think about this book all the time. Um, it's really amazing because it deals with really big themes like betrayal and love. Um, and for me, I really read this as a story about how the way we treat people can 
have consequences for years and even generations to come. Um, and I think that this book really amazed me because it covered so many things, but it was so human and it followed these deeply flawed characters and their families. My next recommendation is Blood Water Paint. I haven't seen many other people recommend this book. Um, it's by Joy McCullough. I really like reading books that have something to do with artistry or beauty, whether that is architecture or individual beauty, like the picture of Dorian Gray. I just find it really interesting to read about beauty and artistry. So Bloodwater Paint is about a young artist living in Rome in the 1600s, and she really doesn't have people in her life besides her abusive father and then eventually her painting tutor. Um, and it really just revolves around how this woman survives um, violence and abuse and how she looks to other women, I think is really interesting. She has really no one to talk to, no other women in her life that she can talk to about her hardships or her artistry. So it's just very interesting to read about all of the things that this woman struggles with and how she sticks to her guns and lives her truth no matter the cost. And it is an incredible story of her bravery, her artistry, and her resilience. Next, I'm recommending If We Were Villains by ML Rio. This book is a five star to me. It's very captivating. It might not be a perfect tale, but it is very enthralling. It follows a mystery. It's not that mysterious, but the way that this story is told, I can feel this atmosphere. This book is all about seven university students who are going through a program all about Shakespeare. And this was really great for me to read. I actually went to school for theater. So this was really interesting to me. You don't have to have an appreciation for Shakespeare to enjoy this. However, it will help if you have like a cursory appreciation of Shakespeare. You can feel the leaves crunch at this Northern University, you can feel the intensity of what these characters are going through and the pressure that this death and this mystery are having on them. The main character is a Nick Carraway type where he is largely an observer. He's a student at this school, much like the others, but he's not the leading man. He's not the villain. Um, and he's just kind of trying to fit in wherever he belongs. And you see him really take in these emotions and experiences of the other characters. And I, I can't describe him any better than kind of a Nick Carraway type. So I know I talked about If We Were Villains by ML Rio, but I have a few other Dark Academia reads that are really great to read during fall and even into winter. So next I have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So this is the same kind of deal as If We Were Villains, where there is a murder, um, very mysterious behavior. The main character is dealing with all of these different types of characters at an Ivy League university and really reckoning with what does it mean to be friends with these people? How far am I willing to go to belong? And it really deals with these um, larger themes of morality in a very interesting way. It takes a lot of turns, this book, but I do have to say that comparatively, I prefer if we were villains. This one deals with themes about Shakespeare. This one deals with themes about um, Greek mythology. So I like these things a lot, but I have to say 
that the way this is written is a little bit easier to follow. And I have to say it's, it's more interesting, more captivating. This is an up all night read. So is this, but it's going to go a little slower. Next for Dark Academia, I have The Divines um, by Ellie Eaton. This is a tale about a boarding school and the young women who go to school there. Um, it's very interesting. It kind of reminds me of Heather's and it deals with a woman who is now looking back at her childhood at this boarding school and really how this shaped her identity as a woman as she grew and um, developed friendships with people and how she was influenced by her time here. Next we have My Dark Vanessa, which is really a novel in conversation with the novel Lolita. This is really from her perspective. So this deals with a woman who had an inappropriate relationship with her teacher growing up all the way to the current day Me Too movement where she is a grown woman. So this really asks the question, was she in love? Was she being groomed? It's very intense to read about, but it is beautifully told. The writing is just so immersive and so evocative of this emotion. And I really recommend this book. I think this is a must read. Okay, next I'd like to recommend Normal People. If you haven't read this book yet, what are you waiting for? This is, in my opinion, Sally Rooney's best work. It is very deeply emotional. It deals with these very beautifully real characters. They are not perfect by any means, but we still root for them. It's very emotional. This book took me on a journey and I was unwell for a very long time after reading this and I can't recommend it enough. Next we have Jacket Weather. I have not seen this book recommended very much and I honestly don't know why. It's very cinematic. It is very contemplative and it just feels like a really good fall movie, but it's a book. Um, I read this when I was traveling to New York City and it takes place in New York City and deals with lost love and goes back and forth um, between a few different timelines and it's just very beautiful. It's very simple. It's a great airplane read and it's beautiful. I loved it. Next, we have A Certain Hunger. This book was all the rage um, and for good reason. It is deeply unsettling. It is very raw, very intense, very off-putting. It deals with a woman who is a chef who has decided to kill and eat her exes one by one. It's very unsettling. It's very weird. And it was a great ride. So my next recommendation for all the spooky vibes is going to be Just Like Home. This is very otherworldly, very eerie, as we deal with a protagonist who comes back home after many years of living away from home. We know that a very traumatic and sad event has happened in this town, specifically in the house that she grew up in. So it deals with the relationship between her and her mother and father. Her father did something very bad. I'm gonna try not to give spoilers away, but that's on the back. I read the physical copy of this book as well as listening to the audiobook driving up to upstate New York. And when I tell you my jaw was in my lap, this is very interesting, very unexpected, and very otherworldly. The Only Good Indians deals with a traumatic event that happened in the narrator's youth that starts to permeate his every day, even years later. It's very subversive. It's very surprising as it takes twists and turns um, through becoming a slow burn where you're kind of starting to question the narrator's sanity all the way into this really thrilling cat and mouse game almost. So 
this is a really interesting read. I haven't read anything like this. So there were a few of my favorite books to read in the fall and even into winter. I hope you found something that maybe is new for you or something that you're excited to read. Go ahead and leave a comment below with a book that you can't wait to read this spooky season or even this winter. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.